All right, welcome back everyone for another deep dive. Yeah. This time, we're looking at the second game of the World Chess Championship. Mm -hmm. This is the match between Ding Liren and Gukesh D. Yeah, super exciting matchup. Of course, we have the game notation right here in front of us. Of course, yeah. We've also got a couple articles, post-game analysis. Some really insightful commentary this time around. Yeah, so we're going to jump into all that. Let's get into it. Now, game one, Ding, one with black. Yep. So there's a bit of pressure on Gukesh now. For sure. Let's see how he responds. Yeah, how does he come back from that? Well, right off the bat, I was pretty surprised by the opening. Yeah, very interesting choice by Ding. He went with one... E4. One E4, yeah, not something we see from him too often. Which leads to the Italian game. Right. I mean, he won with black in game one, so it's surprising he didn't stick with that. Yeah, I thought we might see the Sicilian again, maybe try to press that advantage. Me too. But I think this shows just how strategically deep Ding can be. Yeah, and maybe a bit of a psychological play too. Oh, absolutely. Keep Gukesh guessing. Oh, Gukesh's response to this was also interesting to me. Yeah, very solid. He didn't try to force anything. Nope, kept it nice and classical. Just focus on developing his pieces. Yep. Good peace, Harmony. You know, it shows a lot of maturity for such a young player. Absolutely. He didn't let that game one loss rattle him. Yeah, exactly. Taking it one game at a time. Now, a key moment early on is Ding's move five and C3. Right. A bit of a less common line in the Italian. What's going on there strategically? Well, I think with this, Ding is signaling that he wants a quieter game. So he's avoiding those complications that maybe Gukesh wants. Exactly. Forcing him to play a more strategic game. Interesting. I hadn't thought of it like that. Yeah, it's all part of the mind games at this level. Yeah, definitely. Every move has a deeper meaning. So we've got a quiet opening. What happens as we move into the middle game? Well, it's a lot of back and forth maneuvering. Give me a sense of the action. Any specific moves that stand out? Well, there's this one moment, move 12, where Ding plays B3. Okay, 12, B3. Yeah, it seems like a simple pawn move. Yeah, unassuming. But it's actually a pretty big power play. Hmm. Tell me more about that. Well, it really strengthens White's control of the queen side. Okay. And that ends up being crucial in this game. Okay, interesting. It really restricts Black's pieces. Ah, oh, I see. And it creates these subtle weaknesses in Black's pawn structure. So it's like a slow burn kind of strategy. Exactly. He's just slowly squeezing. Yeah, squeezing the life out of Black's position. So how does Gukesh respond to this? Well, he doesn't just sit back passively. Right. He tries to create his own opportunities. Yeah. He makes some active moves to counter that pressure on the queen side. Give me an example. So one that stands out is Gukesh's move 14 and d4. 14 and d4, okay. Yeah, I think he's trying to seize the initiative there. Try and take control. Yeah, putting some pressure on White's pawns. So is this a risky move? It is a bit risky, but it's calculated. <laughs> Gukesh is known for his dynamic style. Right. And with this move, he's really activating his knight, yeah. challenging White's control of the center. Trying to create counterplay. Exactly. So how does Ding handle this? Well, he doesn't overreact. Okay. He plays very calmly. Smart. Defensively, he plays 15. The no. one? 15. Yeah, neutralizes those threats. Okay. Keeps the position balanced. So it's like a constant back and forth. Absolutely. It was like a tug of war. Yeah, this strategic battle for control. And you got to remember, the pressure is intense at this level. Oh, yeah. World championship. Every move is scrutinized. Yeah. Can't make any mistakes. Nope. One mistake could cost you the whole match. Now, before we move on to the later stages of the game, yeah, I want to know, were there any missed opportunities? Oh, there are always missed opportunities in chess. Yeah. Especially at this level. Give me an example. Well, for Gukesh, there's one around move 18. 18, okay. Instead of playing passively with 18. Yeah. He could have gone for a more aggressive 18.g5. 18.g5, what would that have done? Well, it would have challenged White's control of the king side. Okay, interesting. Might have opened up some lines for his pieces. So he missed a chance to maybe create some threats? Yeah, potentially some serious threats against Ding's king. But why do you think he didn't play it? Well, remember he's trailing in the match? Right. Maybe he didn't want to take unnecessary risks. Makes sense. It draws not bad for him at this point. Exactly. Got to play the long game. Now, what about Ding? Any missed opportunities for him? Yeah, actually, around move 20, okay. he could have played more actively on the king side. So he could have pushed for more? Yeah, he could have tried to exploit a weakness in Black's pawns. What kind of move are we talking about? Well, instead of the passive 20, knee no. two, right. he could have considered 20, 
F4? 20. F4. Yeah, that would have challenged Black's control of that key E5 square. I see. It's a move full of possibilities, both positional and tactical. So he missed a chance to maybe create a winning chance. It's hard to say for sure. Yeah. But it definitely would have made Gukesh think hard. Yeah. Put some pressure on him. Absolutely. Wow. So even in this seemingly quiet game, yeah. there are all these hidden opportunities. That's chess for you. These turning points. Every move matters. It's amazing how much calculation goes on. Yeah, and intuition too. So much more than just moving the pieces. It's a battle of minds out there. Well said. Now, despite these missed chances, the game actually ends in a draw. A draw? How does that happen? It's a draw by repetition. Okay, threefold repetition. Exactly. So the same position occurs three times in a row. Yep, and that means either player can claim a draw. So walk me through those final moves. All right, so after a series of exchanges and maneuvers, mm -hmm. we reach this point where the game is essentially in a stalemate. Ah, is They're shuffling their pieces back and forth. So neither player can make any progress. Exactly, and they both recognize- Smart uh, players. Yeah, they're not gonna waste time on a hopeless situation. So who claims the draw? It's actually Gukesh who claims it after move 23. Okay. But it really feels like a draw by agreement. Yeah, like they both knew it was over. Exactly, it's just but, a lot of respect between the players. Absolutely, good sportsmanship. So the game ends in a draw. What does this mean for the championship? Well, for Gukesh, it's a big psychological boost. He needed that. Yeah, after losing the first game, this shows he can hang with the champ. Right. This half point will definitely give him some confidence. For sure, and for Ding. Well, I think he played pragmatically. Yeah, he's still in the lead. Exactly. No need to take risks. Conserving energy for the rest of the match? Yep. This is a marathon, not a sprint. It's fascinating how this match is unfolding. It is. Very intriguing. Yeah, game one, a decisive win for Ding. Yeah, very impressive. And now game two, this tense draw. Lots of strategic thinking on display. Yeah, and mental fortitude too. Both players are at the top of their game. So what are the key takeaways from this game? I think it really highlights the importance of adaptability. Okay. I like that. Ding, who's known for his aggressive style, right. he showed he can play a patient positional game. Yeah, when he needs to. And Gukesh, while he's known for his tactics, mm -hmm. he showed a lot of maturity and resilience. Yeah, beyond his years, for sure. So this adaptability will be crucial as the match goes on. So we have this clash of styles. Yeah, experience versus youth. What's your prediction for the rest of the match? It's tough to say. Yeah. Gukesh will be trying to build on this momentum. Yeah, he wants to even the score. And Ding, he'll be relying on his experience and his strategic depth. Yeah. The psychological battle will be huge. Yeah, for sure. It's all about anticipating your opponent's moves, finding those weaknesses. So much more than just playing chess. It's a game of strategy, psychology, endurance. Absolutely, and it's fascinating to watch. It is, and I'm excited to see how the rest of this match plays out. Me too, me too. It's anyone's game at this point. All right, well, that wraps up our deep dive for today. Thanks for having me. And to all our listeners out there. Keep those brains sharp. Keep those pawns moving. And we'll see you next time.